Second Ezra 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The four storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which, when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 16 When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and I will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord Yahweh, have spoken it. This is Dabu 7, and we have now entered this new phase here on the world stage where everyone is affected by what these politicians are doing. Now, it is the energy crisis that is manipulated, no doubt, through and through, and we're seeing this come down different avenues. You've got your natural gas, you've got your coal, you've got your hydro. But globally, what some are calling a perfect storm doesn't check out to be just that. It looks like some of these things were set into motion and done purposely. Now, when you look out off the coastline and you see boats docked day after day and records are getting shattered and they're just not letting them unload them at the port, well then, you can clearly see that something huge is going on here. With that, we have the rise in fuel cost, the rise in coal happening. Now, they tried to say that you can't sell coal in America. Climate change. They shut down the coal industry, destroyed it, dismantled it in this country. Now they're saying they cannot find enough workers to go mine the coal mines to sell it to China. Mind you, in your state, you may not be allowed to do that anyway. This is the government that wants to do this. They want what you've got in your backyard so they can sell it for high dollar. Can't you see what this whole thing's been about? Come across you and tell you that you can't do this with your natural gas and your coal? Make every state throughout the Appalachians that depended on coal poor and bring them to their knees? Is anybody paying attention? Because that's exactly what they just did and have been doing. And all the while, the governments are selling hordes of coal to China. Are they bitching at China saying, oh, climate change, climate change? No. They just continue to sell. If they really cared, they would not sell to them. People better start using their brain quick before the lights go out. I'm going to break this down further and what this means, and we don't have much time left. Join me on the live streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on DLive. I hope to see you there. You ever wondered? Where will a Amazon employees earn at least $15 an hour, but $15 is just the start. This is Dabu7, taking a look here at this so-called energy crisis that is happening around the globe. This is just another rung here in the plan of what I see being implemented here globally. Now, in this instance, we've seen Europe and China facing issues, and we've been hearing these, these noises for some time now. But now the warning shots are coming out saying that here in America, get ready, you're gonna face blackouts this winter. Where? I don't know. But when the big sector bosses are making these statements, people better start paying attention. They're saying that the whole entire supply chain is stretched beyond its limits. They're saying that it's going to be a challenging winter for us here in the United States. This brings in what Joe Biden was reading off the teleprompter when he kept saying a dark winter. Dropping the subliminal. Now, they're also saying that 23% of utilities are switching away from gas to burn more coal. You know, that they kind of came along everywhere in these states and kind of outlawed so that you couldn't sell it and all this other stuff. But yet now we're seeing it getting sold in record amounts. And it's kind of obvious that this whole transition to go green isn't going to take years, but it's going to take a lot longer than that. So the biggest warning in this whole thing 
is that they're saying blackouts are going to come this winter. We've seen them in the summertime, and we've seen ice storms and things cause blackouts in the winter in the past. But with these ominous warnings, with this whole energy crisis underway, I'm hoping you have a plan. What if the lights go out when it is freezing out? Does anyone have a plan? Well, I'm going to discuss this further on the next live stream. Join me Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern only on DLive. You'll find links below. Much love. We have entered the everything shortage. And if you have not heard this term yet, well, you have now. This is all connected to this staged global event that we're living through right now. What they're now shifting into and calling the global energy crisis ties into this as well as inflation, the cost of everything going through the roof, the power of the dollar declining. And the shortage is hitting everywhere. You can go in just about any store and you can see that things are thinned out. I have these reports coming in from all over and I've seen it with my own eyes. Different items, different places, but it's happening. And when you talk to the people in the stores, they say, yeah, we don't know when we're getting this. We don't know when we're getting that. You may go down here and find this. You go down to that place, you may find what you're looking for, but then you notice that their shelves are looking empty. This is what I believe is going to be the way from here. I know many are not going to want to hear this. We've given the warning over and over and over to have a plan, but it's like, Choking everything off. Boiling the frog, if you will. I spoke about this many times on the live show, where I can speak freely on all these topics. But this right here, this everything shortage, is going to expand. You're going to start to see more and more items that are scarce, that you can't get your hands on. And when you know it, the mainstream media not really saying anything. Unlike the last time, when they did, and we saw all kinds of panic, beginning of 2020, this time we're seeing boats sitting anchored out in the water off the coastline, and you're being told you have to wait on your goods. If you want to know more about this, join us on the live streams. I'm going to break this down further censorship free over on DLive, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. You'll find links below in the description box. Hope to see you guys there. Much love. Shalom. All blessings. Honors and glories unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bahashem Racha Kudash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth, as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy, to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom he so called Negroes, Latinos. Native American Indians and Israelite foreigners of the sea land of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say, Shalom, and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shara, this lesson is edifying. Things will only continue to get worse and worse until we finally reach the end of the downfall of the kingdom of Esau Edom who according to Malachi chapter 1 verse 4 is the border of wickedness they are the wicked very soon the globe is going to experience unprecedented famine And not only just a famine of bread and drinking water, but also, and more importantly, as concerning the Israelites, a famine of hearing the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Because two thirds of our people still continue to mock 
and to scorn and disregard the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see, as things had so-called gradually began to so-called go in back to being <laughs> so-called better, two-thirds of the nation of Israel had went right back to being extremely comfortable. They do wax fat and kicked. Just as the scripture says, Jeshua on wax fat and kick. Because when Jake gets comfortable, he tend to completely disregard and forget the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai. And we, they become complacent in the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And two thirds, they never feared our Heavenly Father Yahweh through our Lord and Savior, His Son Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. This is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cries without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. And wisdom has been crying out, she's been uttering her voice. In the chief places of concourse, in the agora, in the marketplace, in the cities, on the internet, which pushes this word across the globe. So there's no excuse. She cried in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge, because two-thirds of the nation of Israel, they delight in their scorning towards the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, because they are taking counsel from the false leaders of our people, which cause them to ear, and they that lead them will be destroyed right along with them. Because they're both going to fall into deep ditch. <laughs> and fools hate knowledge because they hate knowledge. And the scripture says that wisdom and knowledge shall be disability of thy times. The strength of salvation. During the times of Jacob's trouble. The strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Is an Hebrew Israelite man's treasure. And it would elect because the order is Yahweh the Father, Yahweh Shai, the Son, our Lord and Savior, the Israelite man, beginning with the elect, and then the Israelite woman, and then child. And I said this at the camp last Saturday, and I'll say it again in this lesson. A lot of you so-called women out there, because <laughs> you're not women, but a lot of you so-called women out there, a lot of you so-called sisters that claim that you're in this truth, you still buck up against your heads, respectively. You still cause them griefs and sorrows, man. And Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai sees you, to whom this may concern. To you sisters out there that are sincere and that do your best, if this rebuke in this portion of this lesson does not concern you, then don't worry about it. Keep on doing your best. And may Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai break a thumb to you sincere sisters out there that do your best but as concerned the ones of you out there that don't and that watch these lessons this message is for you yeah you if you don't get your act together then you're going to be left behind in darkness and you will be destroyed so get your mind right, get your act right, and get an order as soon as possible because we are approaching Jacob's trouble. We are about to 
approach very unprecedented times, man. So I'm not one, you know, that really speaks about <laughs> women and all that, but this is just all true to spirit. Okay. But reading on, but more importantly, getting in order and being on point goes double for the Hebrew Israelite man. It says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And that that's what the Lord is doing right now. He's been making known his words unto the nation of Israel, beginning with his elect. But only the elect of the nation of Israel will and have received the reproofs, the words of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Oh, but only the elect have regarded. But ye have said and not all my counsel with none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord Yahweh, they were none of my, my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. And they're going to be filled with their own ways and their own devices during the time of Jacob's trouble, in which we are fastly approaching. Because you see, people around the globe are so comfortable, especially concerning you Israelites. Comfortable, man. But when things are getting intense, that's when you attempt to get an order. But soon it's going to be too late, just as it was during the time of our forefather Noah when he had, when the Spirit of the Lord had shut that, the door of that ark. Well, he was right. You know, we should have listened. Oh, no, it's going to be too late, man. It's going to be too late. That's why, you know, we all have to do our best to stay prayed up, stay as much in the spirit as you possibly can to please your Haobashimi Shai and be obedient because the Lord delights in obedience. But disobedience, which is rebellion, is as a sin of witchcraft. And what is the penalty for that? Death. So this is back in Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 16. Because the Lord said, My servant shall eat the prophets and the elect men, which are the true high-value mills on this earth. <laughs> the Lord is going to provide for us. The Lord is willing. I'm of the elect as well as you brothers and a few sisters out there that are sincere and that believe. Because, again, two-thirds of the nation of Israel, which <laughs> the majority of them are women, and then men and children, are going to be destroyed out here, man. So it behooves you uh, women that are not in order to get in order as soon as possible. Don't forget what the Lord did to Miriam. Played her with leprosy and had her separated from Israel for seven days. Don't forget uh, uh, Jezebel. See, Scripture says that all things that are written before time are written for our learning. A lot of you disobedient Israelite sisters out there, if you don't get an order as soon as possible and stop giving your husband's hell, especially if he's a prophet, a man of the Lord, then the Lord 
will not take pleasure in you and will destroy you. So, get it together, man. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 16. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. And your staff of bread, it's stuff that you do to make ends meet. All those things, as we have been seeing across the globe, has been broken. And to those that still do retain their staff of bread, all those things will be gone soon. Because this energy shortage that's been ongoing globally will cause a lot of greater disruptions and shortages. Not to mention the effects of inflation and then the debt ceiling which they have to come to an agreement whether or not they're going to increase it in uh, December but laws will and they don't and in not being able to do so will cause the greatest and most unprecedented crash in history because this place is, is, is 30, about 30 a trillion dollars in debt, man. And if they can't pay their, pay their debts, they're going to default. And as I mentioned earlier, and I, I was a little bit all over <laughs> in this lesson today, but just that's just the spirit, man. The Lord said that man, man shall not eat uh, live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is this word. Because that's our true water and bread, food. Because the food of this world is corruptible, it perishes. But these words are everlasting. That's why we're going to be spiritually satisfied, satiated, filled during the evils to come. Eve means time, ill means bad. So will I send upon you famine and evil beast. And they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee. I will bring the sword upon thee, I the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. So all these things out, out there, you know, these different evil wild beasts that are in these zoos and, and whatnot, when they break loose, they're going to be looking for food. They're going to be hunting for food. Especially <laughs> if they've been starving. So now let's finish up in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear and sown. All these different farmlands are going to appear and sown. All these different supermarkets out here in these different stores are going to appear and sown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. So the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You won't see your local grocery stores and supermarkets filled anymore with food because they're going to be suddenly fo be found empty because of storehouses and farmlands being found empty, appearing unsown as if they've never been touched or refilled. And the trumpet shall give a sound, and the trumpet is giving a sound right now, which is this word. And shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And the people not be afraid, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. But only the elect is going to be afraid and take heed. But as for two-thirds, they won't. So, I'll conclude here. The Lord's will in this lesson was edifying. And again, as concerning you, uh, women out there, just get an order, man. We're not perfect, but don't use that as an excuse 
not to do your best because there is no try. There's only do. <laughs> As Yoda said, no, there's no try. Only do. Do or do not. Do your best to get in order. And I'm going to say this as well, too. I notice that some of you uh, Hebrew Israelite sisters out there be saying, oh, I'm servant of, a, for servant of the Most High. You're not no servant of the Most High. The men are the servants of the Most High. As a matter of fact, the servants of the Most High, Yahweh, are the prophets. On down to the elect men. You women serve the Heavenly Father through your husbands because the Lord does not, Yahweh Bashim Yahushad does not directly deal with you. The majority of you will be saved through your husbands. And that's how you serve the Lord, by being obedient to your heads. Now, you will have sisters out there that the, that, that the Lord will preserve and deliver for an elect man in the kingdom, for men in the kingdom to bring back seed. But the majority will be delivered through their husbands, through childbearing. Okay? And then you'll have those uh, brothers out there, that will, the unbelieving brothers out there that will be sanctified through uh, their wives that do believe. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying to the elect. Lord's willing, until the next I say, Shalom. Abide with ball.